here. Welcome, my name is Angela Petrilli. We are here with the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman. Hope you guys are doing great on a Saturday wherever you are. I hope you are doing well. We are going to be learning the mighty Over the Hills and Far Away by Led Zeppelin, folks. Houses of the Holy. Yes. Good, good stuff. So, so excited to be teaching this one today. I'm thinking like, you know, as I've been sitting here these last few weeks, because this is the seventh episode of this, um, to, to do this tune. So we're going to get right into it. I am going to get through as much of this song as we can today because there are a lot of parts, but we're going we're gonna to put it all together and it's going to be great. So what I want you to do here, those of you who have an acoustic guitar, go ahead and grab it. Six string is cool. I'm going to be grabbing a six string. It's going to be great. Standard tuning, okay? Standard tuning here today. And yeah, so let's get right to it. But before we do, folks, I would love to know where you are from. So let me know where you're tuning in from all over the world, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, wherever this is, is streaming from. I want to know that. Where are you tuning in from? And let me know your dream concert. Dream concert. If you can go in a time machine and go back in time, what is the concert that you would love to have seen? So those are my two questions for you. Okay, grab your acoustic guitars and let's get started folks. All right. So what we've got here, there are going to be lots of hammer-ons, lots of pull-offs with this riff. Just letting you guys know, again, those of you who have tuned in these lessons know that we're going to take this nice and slow. So for the first part here, iconic, right? We all know how this goes. It sounds like this. Okay. Let's go ahead and break this down. First of all, open G string. And we're gonna hammer on with our first finger on that A on the second fret. And then pull it off, okay? So again, nice and slow. There's the first bit. Now with our third finger, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna reach over to the fourth fret, okay, of the D string, that's your F sharp. And then release, D string, okay? Here we go. And then the G string to complete the riff, okay? So when we put this all together, it sounds like this. I'm gonna do that a few times. Those of you, if you want your acoustic guitars, go and grab them. Let's learn this. This is a fun one, okay? So here we go. And then you finish with your G chord. Okay. And the full G chord. So, so there are different versions of playing G. I know a lot of folks do it like this. And a lot of folks do it like this. For this tune, we're going to be going over the second version of this G chord. So what we're doing here, first finger, second fret, A string. There's your B. Okay. Your third. Your G is going to be the root up here, third fret, E string. Okay. Your third finger is going to be playing D. D is in dog on the B string. B is in boy, okay? And then pinky finger right here, third fret, E string, there's your other G. So that's the chord we want, okay? That's the G, that's the G chord that we want to use here. So let's go ahead and do this riff a few times. I'm going to play it at varying speeds, so follow along if you can. Let's do that the right way. First bit, let's do it a little faster. One more time for good luck. So there you go. That's the first riff. Now, let's go to the second riff. What's happening here? Let's break it down. So. D chord, let's talk about the notes. Again, same hammer on and pull off here at the second fret of the G string, open G string, second fret, your A, and then release the, the, the G again. Now 
our F sharp one more time, fourth fret, okay, of that D string. Open G string. Now, third finger, what we're gonna do here, fourth fret of the G string. So that note is B, B as in boy. Bring that back, first finger, second fret, G string, there's your A, remember whole step, B to A. Now pull off to play that G string, er, and then the open D string there, okay? So let's do that again, nice and slowly here. We're gonna do this a few times, okay? Follow along if you can. few times. Okay, now let's put part one and part two together. So here we go. One more time, parts one, parts two. Okay, now in the tune, those two parts repeat. So that happens twice. the third part. So the way I want you to think of it is like this, kind of outlining an E minor chord. Okay, but we're going to do it with one finger here. This is a bit that I know a lot of folks kind of get half right, but I want you guys playing this the correct way. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. So how we do this third part of the intro is like this. then you're gonna to go to a G chord again. Okay, let's talk about how to accomplish this. So, open A string, then you go to the second fret, so that's your B. Now, with that second finger, you're gonna flatten it, or with your first finger, you're gonna flatten it on the second fret, okay? So like this, okay? So. With that flattened finger, you're hitting that E on the second fret of the D string. Okay, let's do this little bit a few times because this can seem a little bit awkward. And again, those of you who have questions with these riff rundowns, okay, I always answer your guys' questions. I get to as many as I can. So type them in if you guys are on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube or Twitch or wherever you're tuning in from. Type in the questions and after this bit, we're gonna get through as many of those as we can, okay? So again, thanks for tuning in, guys. So here we go. Let's go ahead and look at this third riff again, okay? So here we go. Now you're gonna go back to B on the second fret of the A string. And now, of course, since this is a song of hammer-ons and pull-offs, we're gonna do another hammer-on here, okay? Open D string, hammer on to the second fret E, and then release with that D string, okay? So when we play this, that's how we play it slow, okay? Of course when we play it fast, it sounds like a lot and it's, 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 it's jumbled, but here's the thing, and this is something I say in every single one of these riff rundowns, you cannot play anything fast that you can't play slow. 
So take your time here. That is really the, the, the big theme of these lessons. So we're gonna take our time, we're gonna focus, we're gonna have good solid intention on these riffs that we are learning, okay? So take your time. You can't play anything fast, you can't play slow, okay? So here's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna run through this riff a few times at varying speeds and follow along. too that I want you guys to remember throughout the entirety of this song is the importance of alternate picking. So this top, bottom, top, bottom that happens. So you want to hit the top of the string and then in the next note that's being played, you want to go ahead and hit the bottom of the string and pluck upwards from the bottom of the string. So like this. So top, bottom, top, bottom. See how my wrist I'm very, very short little movements here, okay? But notice, a lot of that energy is coming from that, holding that pick with the first finger and the thumb. Top of the string, bottom of the string. Top, bottom, top, bottom. So when we do a riff like this, it rolls a lot easier. See that top, bottom in action? Versus if I try to only play the top of the string, which is something I see in a lot of guitar players, I'm telling you what, this, this alternate picking is a beautiful, beautiful way to allow you to gain fluidity in your, in your playing. It's a good technique to, to really incorporate in your playing, okay? So notice if I play with only downstrokes, it's, it's not as fluid. And you'll like kind of trip up, you know? It's, 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 it doesn't flow as nicely. See the difference? So that's something I want you to, to keep in mind as you're practicing this is really, really focus on that alternate picking and just not with this song, with every song, cause it's great. Okay, so what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do those three riffs right now. Here we go. Let's play it correctly. <laughs> here we go again. there those are the three parts of the intro so far we're gonna do another new part here and then it's gonna be time for some live questions folks thank you for being here those of you tuning in my name is Angela Trilly with the riff rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman and we're learning over the hills and far away by Led Zeppelin today yes so here it's part four of that intro <laughs> learn it. So, same riff from the very, very top. And that's all we're going to do there. How we do that? Hammer on, G string open to the second fret of that G string, which is our A. Pull off to that G again. Go to that F sharp on the fourth fret of the D string. And then open D string there. Pull off if you can, because it sounds kind of cool. Like that. Now we go to a C add nine. Okay, this chord, how do we play that? Second finger, third fret of the A string, there's your C. First finger, second fret, D string, that's your E. Your third finger is gonna go on the third fret of the D string, or of the B string, which is your D note 
okay? Pinky finger, third fret, E string, that is G, okay? So that is the chord. It's my favorite guitar chord ever. I love this chord. Now we're gonna do here, we're gonna go back. We're gonna lift our third finger. We don't need it right now. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put our first finger on the second fret of the A string, which is B, so this would be a G over B. So let's do that move. And again, really, really light strumming here. We want it consistent. Allow the sustain of those strings to ring through, okay? Nice light touch with that hand, just like last week with the, uh, with the Keith tune we were learning. Now we're gonna do this. First finger, third finger, and fourth finger we're gonna use here, okay? Put your first finger on the first fret of the A string, B flat. Your third finger, third fret, D string. There is your F. Leave the G string open here, okay? And then with your pinky finger, third fret of the B string, that's a D. Really pretty chord there, okay? So. It takes a little bit to get your hand around this one, but I promise once you do, it's worth it. So let's just go over the chord structure so far. Okay, so there's that bit. Let's go ahead and do that a few more times here. Again, keeping this congruence with those strums. Now, this chord, this shape that we're doing right now, slide it up a whole step. Okay, ooh, pretty sound. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna slide that up a whole step and then play that chord again. Just up a whole step, okay? So let's go ahead and do that again at varying speeds. Starting to hear it? It's good stuff. This is, again, a really, really fun tune to, to, to play and break down. So let's do that fourth part again with the riff at the top, and then we'll do the chords, okay? So. Let's go ahead and do the whole part and then we're gonna take some time for questions. Here we go. Faster. Okay, that is the first part of the intro. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take some time for questions. Folks, those of you maybe tuned in a little later in the show, I want to know where you guys are tuning in from. 
what part of the world, and there goes my mic, uh, what part of the world you are tuning in from, and I would like to know your dream concert. So if you can go in a time machine and go back into time and see a show, what would that show be? Okay, so let's go through here. Those of you who have questions, I'll be reading them live right now. YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, folks. Let's see. Let's first, let's see, you know, some of these concerts you guys really wanted to go to. Uh, all right, let's see. Dream concert is Led Zeppelin, Hendrix warming up. That's a, that's a solid one. I like that. Florida. Thanks for tuning in, Joseph. Concert of Bangladesh. That's a good one. I see a lot of you have been putting in that one. That's a great one. That's a great one. Ooh, Eric Clapton, Rainbow Concert, 1973, Rocky. Great one. Love that. Alvin Lee and 10 Years After at Woodstock. John, I'd love to see that one too. Oh, that's so cool. That's so cool. Good to see you, Gary. Thanks for tuning in. Glad you guys are having fun here. We've got Theo from Montreal. Thank you for tuning in, folks. Glasgow, Scotland. Foo Fighters, that's a solid concert. We've got Nirvana, SRV. SRV's up there for me, too. It's one of my favorite guitar players ever and would just love to have seen him. Would love to have seen him. Let's see. Ooh, we got some folks here on Instagram. We've got someone f- tuning in from Virginia, Led Zeppelin at Madison Square Garden. Yes. The Chili's at Hyde Park. Brett, that's a good one. New Jersey, Jimmy and Jerry. Oh, I bet that would be quite a show. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. Very, very cool. David, very nice. Is there a reason I cannot pause this? Yes, it is because, David, we are live, live, live on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all that good stuff. But don't worry. Once this is over, it'll be up on YouTube and you can pause anytime and go back and see how we how we do this. OK, so no worries. No worries there. You'll be able to to get the full benefit of these of these concerts for sure. All right, so let's see here. Let's go through that one riff one more time, and then we'll get on to the second part of this intro. Okay, so here we go. Again, I'm gonna play the first part slow, and then I'm gonna do the first part fast. So here we go, folks. Let's do it a little faster. first part of this intro now let's go ahead and go on to part two so here is part two now this we've done before that hammer on on the G string second fret to a pull off for G third finger fourth fret F sharp on the D string Open D string there. Go to your C add nine. Now, this part, which is really, really fun. Think of this as we're kind of sort of outlining a G major chord, this one. Okay. Here's how we do it, or here's how it sounds, and then we'll do it nice and slow. So, so. cannot stress enough the alternate picking with this tune. Cannot stress it enough. It's going to make this go so much more smoother. Your notes are going to sound great. So again, really, really work on incorporating this alternate 
picking technique, those of you who don't know how to do it, take the time to learn this. Again, it is just a wonderful, wonderful way to add just nice clarity to your playing, okay? So, I played it for you, but let me show you how to play it. So, we've got this. Now, the way that I like to attack this, I keep the position of my hand in this G major shape, so I'm not doing a lot of flailing and moving around and trying to hit these notes. I'm a big believer in, I don't want to spend a lot of energy you know, moving around if I don't really need to. So I encourage you guys to do that as well, is to keep that G shape and then play the notes you need when you need them, okay? So what we've got here is that C add nine. I like to tell my students it's like a little baby G chord. Because then G's right above it if you lift your first second finger. Okay, so we've got that C add nine. With your second finger, strike the E string twice. Like that. So notice how my second finger is on the third fret of the E string, that's G. Okay, so just that move there from the C add nine. Let's do that a few times here. Okay, so that's what we want to do there. There's another hammer on pull off, okay? I told you guys. First finger, second fret A string, there's your B. Just like that. Okay? So, open A string, hammer on with that first finger on the B. Second fret. So, Okay. That's what we want there. The last bit of this hammer on pull off thing in this intro, okay. Open D string, first finger go down to hammer on that E on the second fret, and then pull off from there. like that, okay? Let's take this nice and slow, starting from that C add nine, okay? And then moving on to this outlining of G-ish riff, okay? So here we go. So let's do this a few more times here. Again, this is a super fun one to play. So folks, take, take your time and soak all this in. do all four parts. Five parts? The intro. <laughs> well, let's count. We're gonna do the intro. Here we go.
And now we're into the verse. Now we're into the verse. So that's that whole bit. Again, lots of hammer-ons and pull-offs. If there are two things I really want you to remember from this lesson is that work on those hammer-ons and pull-offs. That's what adds the character to the song. So really work on those. Okay, and part two is that alternate picking. Okay, that's really going to make this so, so much smoother. Okay, alternate picking, that's striking the top of the string and the bottom of the string. And even just practicing it too on just dead strings. So you can get used to it. Now, you don't wanna do a lot of wrist movement because then you may strike a string you don't want to. So let's try and see as consistent as possible, okay? So there we have it there, folks. That's the intro, okay? So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move on to the verse. So those of you who have questions, go ahead and, and, and type them in if you'd like, and I'm gonna get to as many of those as I can. Again, folks who are tuning in, my name is Angela Petrilli here with the Riff Rundown, the awesome folks at Fishman. We are learning Over the Hills and Far Away by Led Zeppelin today. One of my favorite tunes to play on acoustic guitar. So before we get started on the verse, I'm just talk a little bit about the gear that I'm using. So this is my Martin 0017E. Inside of it, I have my Fishman Matrix VT pickup. I love it. I've also got here the little silver box. Those of you guys know, I love this thing. It's the Fishman R Spectrum DI. It's an acoustic imager. I use this at every single acoustic show I play. It has been a staple in my acoustic playing, gosh, since I bought it, which I want to say was either 2013 or 2014. I, I just, it's, it's, it's been a huge, huge part of my playing and it's a good thing to have on an acoustic gig. It's a, it's a great, great pedal, great piece of equipment. I love it. What I'm going through here is the Fishman Loudbox Performer amp. Okay. And then from there, I've got an SM57 mic in that, going through logic to all of you, wherever you are. So good folks at Fishman making some awesome stuff. And it sounds great. So it's good, good stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the verse here. Okay, so what is happening in the verse? Again, we're gonna see some similarities in a lot of the riffs that we saw in the intro. So, so that hey lady, we see that same riff right at the top of the verse, okay? So this one we know. Same as the intro, rad. Nothing new we have to learn, perfect. Now, what's happening here in the next bit. That's the way I choose to play this, because you watch Jimmy Page and he plays this in a lot of different ways, that little riff. I really like to do it like this, and I'm sure I've seen him do it like this. I forget what show it was. But he does a very similar bit. Now, I choose to do it this way. Here's the story of what's going on in this riff. Kind of outlining and playing bits. I'm, I'm doing the double stops in D. And then finishing it with a, your, your basic D chord at the second and third fret of the guitar. So, let's break down what's happening here. This one we know. we get to this double stop riff. Okay. And again, this is my interpretation of this. When I play this live, when I play this out, that's what I, that's what I like to do. It sounds nice and full. I don't want little single line stuff. I, I love the fullness of that. Okay. So what I do here, and again, my interpretation, I'm playing this double stop of D. I'm getting my second finger sliding that from the second fret of the, D, of the D string, okay? From E to F sharp, fourth fret. And then my first finger is on the D note here, third fret B string. So, 
And here's the thing. If you happen to catch that open G string, it kind of sounds cool. So don't worry about just hitting the that F sharp and D. If you happen to get G in there, it's fine. Okay, so like that. And to be honest here, let's say, I'm not doing too much hybrid picking. You can if you want. Or with your fingers, kind of up to you. But if I'm vigorously strumming this song, I would probably just keep it to a pick. keep it on the pick, but feel free to do the hybrid if you want. Now, the next move, second finger, fifth fret of the D string, that is your G. Okay, fifth fret of the, of the D string, G. Your third finger is being placed on the fifth fret of B, which is your E, E is an elephant. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and look at this again. That's the move that's happening here. And again, I'm hybrid, hybrid picking this so that you can hear it and then we'll, we'll apply it in context to the rest of the tune. And then go to your D chord. Now, if you want a little added flair, what you could also do here at this point is lift your second finger up, having that chord become a D sus2, and then hammer on that second finger from the E to the F sharp, making it a D chord. Okay, so those are the two options depending on your level, what you'd like to do, or by ear, it's like, okay, you like this version better? Great. You like this other version better? Great. Okay. That's version going straight to that D chord. Or doing the suspended two into D. Again, a little more movement in that one, but again, totally up to you. Okay. So let's put this into context with the tune. So there's that bit there again. That's my interpretation. I love the fullness of it. It, it maintains the really cool, open, beautiful, yet simple chords that are happening here. And I feel like it's in the style of Jimmy, so. Okay, so there we have that there. Uh, again, I wanna leave this open to questions because I know there's a bunch of little bits. Here's the thing is we're almost done with the riffy parts, then we're really gonna get into the chords of that chorus. And again, the chords aren't as difficult as you think. It's a matter of switching, okay? And just being having a bunch of good initiative when you are switching between these chords and being smart in the way in which you're switching between these chords, okay? So loving that, folks. Oh, Austin, Texas, love it. Thanks for being here, Ken. I love it, folks. I love it, folks. Again, those of you tuning in, I'm Angela Petrilli with the Riff Rundown with the awesome folks at Fishman, and we're learning some Zeppelin today, and I happen to have my Zeppelin shirt on today because why not? I just had to. Okay, so what we're going to do next, okay, uh, is the last bit of the riffage in this verse. And believe it or not, you guys already know it. So let's go ahead and do this. Someone says, am I wearing slippers? I'm not wearing slippers. I'm wearing my really cozy Birkenstocks. So, <laughs> cause it's a beautiful sunny day in Los Angeles here, folks. 
wearing my sandals. Spring has sprung and I'm thrilled. Okay, so here we go. Here's the last bit. Now, this last riff and in going into the really like big part of the tune, which is super fun, probably one of my favorite parts of the song to play, it's great. It's that G riff. Remember the one I said, we're kind of sort of outlining this? That's gonna be the riff, okay? So what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna play it from that top of the verse and then include this riff, okay? So here we go. times. Then we get into that really iconic We're gonna first go over that one more time, okay? And then we're really gonna build and it's gonna be super fun. Okay, so again Second finger, third fret E string, that's your G Again, alternate pick this riff Second finger hammer on, A to B, open A string, second fret A string. And then that first finger again is gonna do some hammer on and pull offs. With that D string, open D string, hammer on to E, second fret, pull off to expose the D string, okay? D chord here. And you're going to strum that. Again, nice and loose, but with initiative. And if you notice here how I strum, I don't like to strum with a closed fist. I find it's just a little bulky, again, for me. I like to have a bit more of an open hand when I strum versus a closed fist. But if you find you're more comfortable with a closed fist, by all means, do it. It's cool. For me, it just feels a lot more feathery and a lot more open if I keep the hand open. Okay, so when we are strumming this, that's our D chord, right? This one we know, but what we're gonna do here is we're gonna play a different inversion of, of the A and of G. That's what happens when we're sliding up here. We're not playing a D chord, even though is the shape similar to this? Yes. But as we go up the fretboard, right, the notes begin to change, okay? So it's those shapes I'm gonna tell you where to play them. So what we're gonna do here, we've got that D shape. Keep it there. Keep your fingers as they are. We are going to slide this up your first finger should be on the ninth fret of the G string, okay? That's your E. Your second finger should be on the ninth fret of the E string, that is your C sharp. Third finger, 10th fret B string, that's your A. So those of you who are following along with your music theory here, A, C sharp, E, are the three magical notes you put together and you make a beautiful, delicious sandwich and that's your A chord. Okay, notice how it sounds. Same chord, different spots, different inversion. Okay, so that's A. We are going to slide this backwards a whole step in terms of guitar, two frets, okay? So these are where your fingers need to be. First finger needs to be on the seventh fret of the G string. D is in dog, that's the note, okay? Third finger, eighth fret of the B string. There's G. And your second finger, 
going to be on the seventh fret of the E string. That's B, B as in boy. So those are the three notes. Hey, if you want to build a G chord, guess what? G, B, D, done. So there it is. Now, why this riff of these chords? And all we're doing is just a different inversion of A and G, right? Why this sounds so awesome is because we're playing it a little bit higher on the guitar. Notice, if I were to play this bit of the song, but use the chords, our A and G, from up here, notice it sounds a little different. It isn't as climactic. Listen. So we've got. the same chords, but they just don't have that pizzazz, right? So that's why it's really important. And I know saying the word inversion and what do you mean chords don't just live here? Explore these inversions. They can end up being really, really cool things that you use in, you know, perhaps songs you write or other songs you play. So let's go ahead and do this now using the correct inversions all the way up at the ninth and seventh frets. Okay, the A and G up here. So here we go. Stopping it right there. <laughs> so see, see how we did that. Again, sliding up using that same shape, being mindful. Okay. A, C sharp, E. Okay, good. G, B, D. That's what makes our A and our, our G chords. Okay, to that D there. All right, so let's do that again. I'm gonna do it a little bit slower here. Feel free to follow along again. I'm just gonna do the sliding from the A to G here, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna do it even slower. And I wanna mention this too. If that D note happens to ring through, I think it's kind of cool. It's fine. Okay, so here we go. Again, from the D chord sliding up from A to G. Not too bad, right? Not too bad. Then we get to the awesome part. Again, now we're back to the normal, hey, these are, these are, right? Or G, D, and A, just like here. Again, nice and open and strong and awesome. But as I mentioned earlier, we want to make sure that we are doing our due diligence here. We are being very, we have a lot of good intent on how we are switching these and being as proficient as possible, okay? And again, can't play anything fast that we can't play slow. So we are going to take our time in doing this. So we're sliding up from G to A, back to G. I like to do that little bit of a sliding with that third finger from A and going back. It's a little light thing, optional. I think it's kind of cool. Like that, okay? Then we go to our G chord. 
then we go to D. Then we go to A. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. One more time. Now, with this switch between G and D here, okay? Because we are playing the, the version of that G chord, where we're, pl we're putting the fifth there, or D, okay? On that third fret of the B string, that's gonna be your pivot point when you're switching to the D chord. What I mean by that is this. Keep the third finger where it is, don't move it. Trust me, it's gonna make this a lot easier. Why lift that third finger when you're gonna go and put it back anyway? So leave it there. Do that move a few times here. Okay, and notice here too, I'm doing this ver these alternating up, down, up, down strums. I want, the, I want the sustain of those chords to ring a little bit here. I don't want to choke them too soon. Okay, so. Like that. So, we talked about that switch between G and D. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go from A, or from D to A. Downstrom on D. I'm choosing to grip A in this way, okay? You can choose to do it like this. But I want more like that rock and roll bluesy kind of grip of that A, okay? What we're doing there is your first finger is going to be placed across the second fret of the G, or excuse me, D, G, and B. We don't want that added six of that F sharp. Be careful, just those three. Those are the only ones I want. Okay. And it's an up strum, so be mindful not to get that F sharp. We don't want that. We just want starting from that C sharp on the B string, okay? So. Rock and roll, man, okay? Let's do this a few more times here. So that's what's happening there. Now, we get to that other bit. If you'll notice here, what I am doing as I anticipate that A chord. I'm palm muting, or kind of muting, right? I'm adding that rhythm. Notice how I'm just covering up the guitar. I'm not playing a chord. And then you go to your A. Again, use your first finger. Notice how flawless the move is when I have that no chord muting part and then go to that E chord. See that? So we've got. I'll do that a few more times. saying when I'm playing that A chord, no A string, yeah, play it. <laughs> play that one too. Totally cool. Thanks for pointing that out. Yes, play that open A string. You're playing an A chord, it's gonna sound good. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this again. Now that intro into the solo, what's happening here, a series of four chords, it's gonna be G, D, A, and E, okay? So it's gonna sound like this. And 
and then into that solo, okay? So let's go ahead and do that again. goes into the solo. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to stop that lesson here. Okay, so now we're going to do in this last bit, we're going to go through the whole thing. Okay, slower and then we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here we go. Here's all the pieces we learned today. We're going to put them all together. Here we go. did today. All those bits. I hope you guys had a ton of fun learning this. I know I had a ton of fun teaching it. We've got a few minutes left, so I'd love to take any live question that you guys have again and just hoping you guys had a blast because I absolutely love doing these. It is such an honor to be doing this for all of you and the awesome folks at Fishman are just great. It is so fun to be working with them and Again, it's just such, I, I, I am so grateful to be spending time with all of you on this beautiful Saturday, wherever you may be. So let's go ahead here. I'd love to answer some of your questions, whether it is about gear, the guitars I'm playing, uh, things about the tune would so, so love to answer your questions. Again, it is such a pleasure to be here with all of you today. Okay, so. I'm, gl I'm, I'm glad a lot of folks <laughs> are, are ha having a great time with this. I'm so, so glad you guys are learning and enjoying playing this tune. Again, it is one of my favorites to play too. So glad you guys are having fun. All right. And, and yeah, let's go through and see. Again, that dream concert, folks. I still want to know, what's your dream concert? If you can go back in a time machine, what would it be? Folks are asking on Instagram, will you be able to watch us on YouTube? The answer is yes, we are streaming live on YouTube right now, folks. So you can go ahead and go to my channel, Angela Petrilli Music on YouTube. Be sure to follow the awesome folks at Fishman on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, all of that good stuff. They've got some really, really awesome content 
uh, Greg and Thomas Rock, Ken is great. There's some really, really good stuff coming down the pipeline with Fishman and be sure to keep up with them and all the goodness that is coming your way from those awesome folks. So be sure to be sure to check them out. You can follow me on Instagram, Angela Petrilli Music, on the Facebook, Angela Petrilli Music. Let's see, on Twitter, Angela Plays Guitar. Again, as I say every week, if you like guitar videos and funny animal videos, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. I'm also on, on TikTok too, but I just stick to the music, folks. There's no crazy dancing on there. Okay, uh, again, if, if you guys are having fun, be sure to give us a follow and subscribe to the channels. There's lots of good stuff coming your way. We've got some great stuff in store for all of you. Okay, let's see. Dream Concert was none other than Led Zeppelin in 77. That is great. Mark, glad you enjoyed the lesson and are going to be playing this tune today. So glad to hear it. Beatles at the Cellar in Hamburg. Yes. Count me in on that one too. That sounds like a great, great concert. Yes. Um, again, it's, it's, it's such a pleasure to chat with all of you and to teach you all how to play some of my favorite riffs in this riff rundown. Uh, <laughs> let's see, uh, who, <laughs> we've got some folks asking about string gauge. Yes, I am using light gauge strings here in terms of acoustic guitar. It's, I've, I've got 12s, I've got 12s on here. So there we go. Um, Again, yeah, so a lot of people saying the Beatles would be one of their dream concerts. I love it. Uh, <laughs> again, this is awesome. Yes, this guitar, I absolutely love this guitar. Glad you, thanks, Tom. It's a, I, I love my triple O's. This is, again, a triple O 17 Martin um, in black smoke. I love this thing. Spruce top mahogany, back and sides. And it's super light, too, for how big this thing sounds, it's a really, really light guitar. Obviously you can tell it's starting to get its wear. Uh, this is really my, this is the one I bring to the gigs and this is, this is the one that I, I, I play a ton. Um, the interface I am going through here is a Focusrite 18 i8 and as far as what's happening with the acoustic imaging here, that is the Fishman RS Spectrum. DI acoustic imager. Again, it is the silver box that I do not leave my house without if I am playing an acoustic gig. It is a great, great pedal. Really does what it needs to do. It allows the guitar to sound as it should, which is my, why I love it so much. Because again, like this guitar in general has so much character. And I know those of us who want to play acoustic guitars and when we buy acoustic guitars, we want it to make sure that you know it sounds great so what the aura does to my ear is it, it just makes the guitar sound as it should when you are playing in a live setting so you don't have to so you don't have to muffle these amazing instruments that we have you know so it's it's a great pedal i love it i've been using it for a really long time and it's just it's just great it's just great it allows guitar to sound as it should um what gary is asking what size pick do you use on acoustic 60, 73, I use 88. So the Dunlop turquoise, or the Tortex, 88, the little green one with the little tortoise on it, so cute. That's the one, <laughs> that's the one that I use. I like those picks a lot. And I, yeah, again, I just, I, I really like it. It doesn't slip. I, I like the feel of it. It's just heavy enough. I'm not a fan of using super, super heavy. Uh, picks, but that one really works for me, allows me to navigate the strings the way I want to and to articulate the strings the way I need to when I'm playing certain songs, you know, whether I am just strumming or if I'm doing a bit of hybrid picking, that sort of thing, and alternate picking, which we talked about a lot. So those things are those things are important to me, so that's why I use the, the picks that I do. But again, those of you trying to figure out what picks you want to use, buy a bunch of different kinds and then just see what you like the best. And again, you know, your, your taste may change, but try things, you know, try things out. It's always good to, to experiment with your playing and see what you like best. Yes. We've got Danny, Jim Dunlop jazz three, you know, those are, those are a little too small for me. I'm a little too aggressive of a rhythm player. I used to use them and then I completely shredded one of my fingers and got blood everywhere. So it's uh, the jazz threes are really good for that super, super, you know, precision 
you know, picking and all of that. They're awesome. They're awesome picks, but with, for what I do, I, I, I like I like a pick with a little bit more mass. Um, again, this is this has been so fun. I, I really hope you guys learned a lot today. It is an absolute pleasure to hang out with all of you and and get to teach you how to play some cool tunes. Again, those of you, be sure to follow Fishman on your social medias. Be sure to give me a follow on social media. Angela Petrilli Music. You can type it in on any of the socials, you'll find me. Uh, Again, thank you all so much. Wishing you all good health and safety and lots and lots and lots of awesome music. Uh, Again, thank you all so much for being here. Huge pleasure. I will see you here next week, same time, same channel. I might do an electric lesson. I might do an acoustic one. I don't know yet. I got two days to figure it out, but I I will definitely let you guys know. Again, everybody uh, be well and be kind, and we'll see you next week.